Hello everyone, it's me Michael with Recreate Church. <laughs> Have you heard about the latest plague 2020 has thrown at us? I'm out here in the woods, not sure if it'll come through on the audio, but you can hear the 17 year cicadas which are coming out this year, which we call in this area locusts, and they come out in hundreds and thousands and millions. So, so yeah, it's like a locust plague. <laughs> That's what we needed 2020, thank you so much. All right, that's not what I wanna talk about today. I wanna to talk about this. Tell me if you agree with the following statement. There is a difference between knowledge and wisdom. What do you think about that? Knowledge is simply having information. Wisdom is applying the information in an insightful way. Uh, for example, knowledge means you know what to say. But wisdom is knowing when to say it. Knowledge is about knowing, no surprise there. But wisdom is about doing. Knowing better and doing better are two very different things. If you're anything like me, then so many of the regrets you have come from times where you knew better, but you did not do better. You know, there's always one person we seem to be able to talk into a bad idea that's ourselves. At the very core, knowledge does not really have any ethical connotation, either good or bad. It's just information. But wisdom is a trait of character. And character is exactly what we're talking about. The ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, Heracl let me say that right, the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, that sounds better, right? Heraclitus. He's ancient. He's Greek. Nobody knows how to say his name and no one cares, but I want to get it right. The ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, a man's character is his fate. Now he got a lot of other things wrong, but he got this right. Your character will be the influencer of the ultimate outcomes of your life, perhaps more than any other single thing. Character who is, is who you are on the inside. Character is a little different from the face that you show the world. Character is who you are when you think nobody is looking. Reputation is who people think you are. Character is who you really are. Now, if you're pretty good at putting up a front, you might be able to fool the whole world into thinking you're someone you're not, but you can never ever fool God. He looks right into our hearts and that's a big deal for us. Because the greatest and the realest blessings come from him alone. Now, people will be impressed with talent and appearance and, and fame and riches and stuff. God is impressed with character. God is looking for people with the character to be trusted with the blessings that he wants to give them. When it comes to being blessable, character creates capacity. That is the heart of these messages about character. Character creates capacity. Character is the secret of being blessable. Now I'm convinced that there are blessings that God wants to give us, but we don't yet have the character to handle them. Now I don't know if that's true for everybody, but it's definitely true for me. I can see that in my life. And as much as it pains me to admit it, looking back over my walk with Christ, there have been times where where I was on the edge of something big, where I was, you know, it felt like something big was gonna happen, the next big level of blessing, make it to the next level, but then I bumped up against the ceiling of my character. God wanted to bless me more, but my character was not enough to handle it. A blessing that we do not have the character to handle properly is not really a blessing. If you give a three-year-old a flamethrower, are you really blessing them? However, if you give a flamethrower to a responsible adult, maybe they could use it wisely. And by the way, my birthday's coming up in a few months. Flamethrower. I want you to understand this. God desires to bless his children. He desires to bless his children. He desires to bless you and me more than we want to be blessed. But there is no incentive for God to really bless us if we don't have the character to receive 
what he wants to give us if we don't have the capacity of character. If he, if he gives us more than our character can handle, it's probably going to be really bad for us in the end. So what do we do? The only sensible course of action is to grow in character. If character creates capacity for blessing, then let's grow our capacity. We're studying the first part of a letter in the New Testament, the letter of James. James was a very fascinating character. Um, character. See what I did there? Uh, James was the half-brother of Jesus himself. He was the first pastor of the first church, and even though it is not in order that way in the New Testament as far as organization, his letter was probably the very first part of the New Testament to be written down. We find it there kind of towards the end, the letter of James, the epistle of James, the book of James, or some people just say James. We're going to talk about character from the book of James. He says a lot about that. Today our verse is James 1.5, one of my most favorites, and it goes like this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So let's break it down. If you lack wisdom. Now, normally James doesn't sugarcoat anything. You know, he's more of a, of a spiritual sucker punch kind of guy. He hits you with stuff, but he's being pretty generous when he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, because really it's not going to be a matter of if so much as when. Truth be told, most of the time we lack wisdom to some degree. Even when we think we understand something completely, there's almost always some part of the story we don't understand. Now, it is a fascinating fact that the less we truly understand something, the more competent we tend to think we are. It's been studied by sociologists. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, not the Freddy Krueger effect. Totally different thing. The Dunning-Kruger effect states more or less that the better you truly understand something, the more you realize how difficult and complicated it is, and usually the less likely you are to claim you've mastered it. So the, the better you understand it, the less you're going to say, yeah, 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 I understand all of that. There's an old saying that knowledge, the knowledge of ignorance is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, once you figure out what you don't know or how much you don't know, you can start to know something. I think the Bible puts it in a much better way. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not that we're like scared of God, you know, cowering in fear. God's going to get you, going to drop a rock on you. No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it at all. It means, though, having an appreciation for how big God is and how small we are in comparison. If God is the standard of wisdom, then, man, we definitely lack wisdom. It's not an if. We definitely lack wisdom. We lack wisdom about the full situation around us. Practically everything in our lives is more complicated than it appears. We certainly lack some wisdom about people's real thoughts and real motivations in nature. We lack wisdom. Now, so many of the mistakes that I've made in my life happened because I thought I already understood. So I didn't stop to ask questions. I didn't stop to say, God, can you please give me wisdom about this and, and really actually wait to hear the answer. You know, I just sort of went. You know, that is a logical flaw. Yes, it's illogical to assume you understand everything. But it's not only a flaw of logic. It's a flaw of character. It's a character issue. And it's really cost me at times. Totally cost me. that I thought I understood, thought I had a handle on it, thought I knew somebody, but... I didn't really. So much of the time, the way we gain wisdom is by making a total mess of things. Know what I'm talking about? It's, it's like the only way we seem to be able to learn is the hard way. Well, surely there's a better way than that, right? James says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Looking to God for wisdom is so much better than learning through the school of hard knocks. Man, the school of hard knocks will teach you some things, but the tuition is incredibly high. It's painful. Where you look for wisdom is incredibly important. Not all wisdom is created equal. Not all philosophy or knowledge is created equal. 2 Timothy 3.7 talks about people who are 
always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's maybe more applicable now than in any point in history. We live in an age where people literally carry a device in their pocket that has almost instant access to the collective knowledge of all mankind, and yet people are still wrong about so many things. It's crazy. Well, can I tell you one of the secrets of the universe? Come and close, come and close. One of the secrets of the universe is this. Google gives knowledge, but God gives wisdom. That's good. That's worth repeating. Google gives knowledge. God gives wisdom. See, God alone has true and absolute wisdom. See, God alone has both all of the truth and the perfect application of the truth. See, there's a difference between earthly wisdom gained through experience and the wisdom of God gained through the spirit. Now, earthly wisdom, it has value, absolutely. It's good. You should learn from your life and your mistakes. But when we receive wisdom from God, we have something extra that we don't just get through human experience. We start to see things from his point of view. That's a mark of real wisdom, where we see a little more from the perspective of God on these situations in our lives. So James continues, that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. Now, most of us have had in our lives, probably somewhere early on, somebody who acted like it bothered them when we asked for help. You know, it might have been a teacher, it might have been a parent, or some older kid, or, or someone in your life whose opinion mattered, who had some authority, and, and the, when you would ask, for, ask a question because you didn't understand, or you'd ask for help, they would make you, make you feel dumb for asking, or, or make you feel weak for asking for help. If that was your experience, then it can be pretty easy to wonder if God is the same way. Does, does God get irritated with us when we ask him for help or say, well, God, I, I don't understand. D does that bug him? No. God does not view asking for help as weakness. We're told he gives wisdom liberally. That's not a political term here. It just means freely, generously. He's not stingy with wisdom if we ask in faith. We're told that he gives wisdom without reproach. Reproach means, you know, ostracizing someone because they've done something. He doesn't mind being asked. He likes it when his kids ask him for help, for wisdom, for understanding. So let's put it all together. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and it will be given to him. Will be given to him. It's a for sure thing. God wants to give wisdom. So let's put the puzzle pieces together and discover the good news here. Okay, we said character creates capacity for blessings, right? We want to be blessed, okay? Character creates capacity for blessing. Wisdom is a trait of character, okay? And now we see that God wants to give us wisdom and will give us wisdom when we ask. So kind of backtracking, wisdom is character, character creates capacity, capacity is for blessing. Maybe if we want to be blessed, we should stop praying so much, Lord, please bless me, and start praying, Lord, make me wise. Abraham Lincoln, a guy who carried a heavy burden, said, I've been driven to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I have nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of those around me seemed insufficient for the day. I hope you never have to carry a burden as heavy as that man carried, but here's the facts. Every single one of us will experience times of life and situations where we are over our heads. Well, we're going to deal with problems that are bigger than our wisdom. Truth is, we're pretty much always over our heads. It's just at certain times we understand it. Even the simplest situation is much more complicated than we ever dreamed. So what's your story? What's your story, my friend? 
are you wrestling with some kind of situation or decision and and you're starting to realize whoa there's a lot more to this i i, I don't know what to do with this i i don't have enough wisdom to handle this or or, or maybe it's worse you're like ah oh, yeah i got all this figured out and we've already understood the dangers of assuming we already know so what do we do well what do we do when we don't know what to do well we we talk about it, we, we talk with people we trust, we research on Google, and those are good ideas, for sure. But remember this, ultimate wisdom comes from God. Google gives knowledge. God gives wisdom. Don't assume you understand your situation as well as you think. I guarantee you it's more complicated than you realize. To some degree, in almost every single situation, every single one of us lacks wisdom. None of us has the full, complete understanding and the ability to apply our understanding in an insightful way. That's what wisdom ultimately is. We need wisdom from God. So ask and he will give. That's what he says. He says, ask of God and he'll, he'll give it to you. Now, he's going to go on and we'll talk about it next time, Lord willing, that we do need to ask with faith, but he still just says, ask. So I want to leave you with the absolutely most important wisdom ever communicated. And here it is. In Jesus is life. Finding Jesus is the ultimate wisdom. Only then can you really tap into heavenly wisdom when you've trusted in Jesus. So find him, trust in him, believe in him, find forgiveness in him. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to our website, recreatechurch.org. And you can go to the little menu at the top and you can click on the spot where it says, you know, how to be forgiven. That's also the place you can learn more about our church. You can, can uh, see our plan for reopening and uh, you can give if you want to give. There's lots of things you can do there. Hey, do me a favor, share these messages. If you're watching by video, if you're listening by podcast, share these videos with your, your friends and your family, with anybody who you think needs some encouragement. Don't we all need some encouragement right now? People need to hear the message that it's the very heart of what we do. Recreate Church, this is what we say every week when we have services. We say, no matter your story, you are welcome, you are wanted, and you are loved by God and by Recreate Church. Love you guys. Can't wait to get back with you. Not exactly sure when we were going to do, be able to do that. We set a date, but I'm not sure we're going to hit that target. We're praying the Lord will lead us to open when it's right, when it's safe, when we can do so. Meanwhile, love one another. Just because we can't meet in a church building, we don't stop being the church. Call your friends. Let them text them if you don't call. Message them and let them know that you love them, you're praying for them and that we're still the church. Do what you can for people. Share the love of Jesus and share the story of Recreate Church. Love you guys. Catch you next time.